All right, finally moving on to part three here. The final part, which is just making the firmware and getting it loaded onto our microcontroller. So here I've gone back to the keyboard layout editor site and we have our numpad from last time. And basically what we've got to do is load up this other site called kbfirmware.com and we can go back here and copy our layout and paste it into here and hit import and this pretty cleanly imports our layout so one thing to note on this first page is um, when we made that decision early on in the schematic to make uh, zero be in column one and enter to be in row four and plus to be in row two. Those happen to be reflected here, but if those weren't um, the way that you set it up, you can click on the key and change the column so we can move where these are attached to the microcontroller. I'm not going to do that because mine happens to already be set up this way. But then we can move on to the pins and what we decided um, in the schematic again was to make row 0 B F4, row 1, B, B1, row 2, B, B3, row 3, B, B2, and row 4, B, B6. Then we set column 0 to be F7, column 1 to be E6, column 2 to be D7, and column 3 to be C6. Um, other things on this page, if you had any LEDs on the board, you can set what pins those go to. And you can also set what microcontroller you are using. The site supports three different microcontrollers, but we are using the 32U4, so I'm going to leave that. Then we can move on to the key map, and you can see that the, the site does actually try to grab um, what keys you want out of your layout. Um, here it, it did all right. It kind of mixed layer one and two together. So we're going to have to change that. But um, another thing is that we can't actually use the numlock key here. We basically need to change the numlock key to like a function key that you'd normally have on a laptop. But instead of being a key that you hold, we need to make it a toggle. And there is actually um, a key code for that. So if we go to FN, this TG option is toggle and we set it to layer one. And now we do need to go back and update all of these. Always takes me a second to find this one. I think it's this. Yep. All right. So this is what our layer zero is. Um, it's just the normal functions of the keypad. Then we can switch to layer one, and here we just want to set the keys that are going to be different when we hit the numlock key. So this one is going to be home, which is. Somewhere. There it is. This one's going to be and 
This one's going to be page up. This one's going to be page down. This is insert. This is delete. And then these ones are just the arrow keys. So we've got up, left, right, and down. And that's all we have to do for setting up the key map. There's also options to add macros directly into your firmware, which you can do here. Here's some stuff to like directly modify the code. Um, we don't need to mess with this, so I'm gonna skip that as well. Settings, we can set a name. So we'll call that the RB17. Um, we don't have any LED stuff, so we can just leave this alone. And you can see here, if you hover over the question mark that for the Atmega 32U4, 4,096 kilobytes is the correct bootloader size. If you want, you can save this configuration so you can load it back into the site later. I would recommend doing that. Um, I'm not going to because I already have it saved. But then you can head over to compile and download this .hex file. Now, this is about the only point in the guide where I'd recommend really not using Linux. Um, you can do some command line stuff to compile, but I found it just easier to use this tool on Windows called QMK Toolbox. So I've gone ahead and um, already downloaded the hex file on the Windows side. Um, so you have that loaded here. It should default to the 32U4, leave it as that. Don't need to do any of this stuff. And I check this auto flash checkbox so that as soon as the device is plugged in and in bootloader mode, it will attempt to flash. Now, uh, I am not using a Pro Micro, but I'm using this USB-C version of it from SparkFun. So, the way I have to get into the bootloader is a slightly more complicated because SparkFun decided that giving the user eight seconds to uh, press a button was too easy and it needs to be uh, 750 milliseconds now. So because I already have firmware loaded on here, I have to hold down reset and plug it in and hold it down for a little while. And then after a few seconds, I'm going to let go and then just spam the button and it puts it into uh, bootloader mode and immediately starts writing the file to it. So now this is the keyboard. Obviously we haven't soldered it to the PCB, but all of the logic of the keys is in here and working. So to get it to be recognized as the keyboard, you just have to replug it. So now the computer should be reading it as a keyboard. And if we wanted to test the pins out, what we can do is go to here. And let's say we want to make sure that um, the delete key is pressing a slash. We know that we need to connect row zero and column one together. So I'm going to bring up a notepad and if I short um, F7 and let's see, what do we need to short on the other side? E6. I accidentally hit um, multiply as well, but when I hold these together, which you can barely see on my camera, it's going to make a bunch of uh, 
slashes, and then we can make some asterisks by uh, doing that. So we know that the keyboard is working. And the only thing that you have to do from there is once you get your PCB, your switches, and your diodes is solder it all together. And you will end up with something awesome like this. And uh, there you guys are. Comment section, I see you guys. You can see yourselves right now because of this awesome polished stainless steel finish. But yeah, this is the keypad. And it is totally functioning. It's reprogrammable. I can put macros on it. And the really awesome thing is if I unplug it and plug it into another computer, all of those key maps and macros stay with it, which is the whole reason I wanted to do this. But uh, there you have it. That's the entirety of part three. And um, with all three of those parts, you should be able to make your own numpad too. And if you want to expand into different keyboard layouts, all of the stuff that I've taught in these three videos is completely transferable to making other keyboard layouts. So thanks for watching and I hope you learned a lot.